Hey, my Married at First Sight Australia fans. Yes, we got a new season to talk about, especially coming off of that crazy season nine in 2022 with Olivia and Dominica and everything even after the season. Yep, that's right. Season 10. It's about to get crazy, even in episode one. And we're going to talk about it. Welcome back to Romance Review TV. It's Lady T and I got another recap for you guys. Married at First Sight Australia. Australia season 10 episode number one and so without any further ado let's talk about this drama so I know here in the states we've had 16 seasons well yes it's been almost a decade for the Australia version and it gets crazier and crazier every single time so we gotta buckle up as we have 20 brides 20 grooms as they embark on what will be no doubt an emotional roller coaster of an experience. And hey, we remember last season, wine glasses were smashed. What's going to happen? Are we going to get any happy endings and people are going to stay together? Only time will tell. But for now, all we know that there is going to more than likely be big scandals at one of these first weddings. So yes, let's talk about hens and bucks night. Uh, the hen parties or the girl parties, we call them bachelorette and bachelor parties over here. Well, it's 20 people. So we'll just introduce you to who stood out the most. And the first person, of course, was Melissa. Are you looking for like a younger guy or an older guy? Older. Definitely yeah. needs to be older. Yes. Hey? Only because yeah. younger, like that's what I've been <laughs> on a weekend basis. Because they're my boys. I'm actually quite a sexual person. Yeah. Multiple, multiple. Okay. Um. And, um I'm gonna bang my ass on the first night. You're gonna bang my ass on the first night. You? I know. Oh, stop. Wow. What do you mean, wow? Well, you just got married to him and now you don't want to sleep with him because I don't know him. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> Unless it was like amazing chemistry. What happened to Thor like... Rockta? You're gonna wanna yes. you're gonna wanna tap her? What happened to Thor? Amazing big Thor Rockta. No, I don't think so. Well, maybe just take it with you, honey. You might have a little bit of fun along the way. Freaky Melissa is absolutely shocked by the idea that a woman like Melinda won't sleep with her husband on the first night. And Melinda is understandably offended. Yeah, that didn't sit well with her at all. However, on the groom side, we have heavy metal rocker Jesse who says that people think he's cocky and arrogant. And he has a whole list of things that are a huge turnoff. I actually brought a list to remind me of just how much it icks me about dating. Are we ready? The best place to start is girls who are addicted to their phones, social media, motivational quotes, hustle and grinding. Who do you think you are? Any girl who calls me honey, sweetie, you're not my auntie. Chicks who are always talking, who always interrupt you. Any girl who starts a sentence with Oh my God, babe. Star sign chicks. Oh my God, that's such a Libra thing to do. I'm not Libra. You're getting agitated. That's such a Leo thing. Not a Leo either. What are you then? My birthday's in July. That makes total sense now. Shut up. Mirror selfies. Dirt on the mirror. Gym photos. Light bikini. Boot. Chicks who pout. <laughs> Moving on. Well, Jesse, I hope it works out for you with your new wife. And of course, we have our infamous experts, John, and of course, Alessandra and Mel Schilling. And I gotta say, at least here on the States, we have to suffer through tuck shopping and telling the family and bridal shopping. On the Australia side, they went straight from the hen and buck parties right to the weddings. So we have Lyndall and Cameron, and they are both adventurous and ready to start a new chapter in their lives. And the experts thought that this pair should start together first. We have Cameron, who's 27, who is a carpenter in the Northern Territory. And he admitted that he has never been in a relationship before and says that living 900 kilometers from civilization has made it hard for him to meet girls. As for Lyndall, she's 27 and she's 
going to throw herself into a relationship without fear for the first time in her life after a miracle drug has given her a new lease on life. So, I mean, it's an exciting moment for her, especially with her having cystic fibrosis and the new medication, I think it's called Trikafta, which is pretty much added 40 years to her life. So her life expectancy is a lot longer than she expected, but she looks absolutely beautiful as she walked down the aisle to meet her groom. And then of course, when they got there, it seemed as if it was all butterflies and giggle as both Lyndon and Cameron meet at the altar and I mean hey tick number one for the experts I got to give it to them I actually think that this is going to be a great couple and then we also saw Cameron decide to read his vows in front of a room of people he just met and it's the perfect time to tell Lindo about his 21 week old little boy named Bodie and of course all of the guests were holding their breath especially Lindo's parents because they thought that he was talking about a child well, it's his little cattle dog, and he played that very well. You want to call that a prank? That was a good one. And Linda was like, oh, I'm stoked, completely stoked. And, you know, she's relieved, he's relieved. They both find each other attractive. Cameron is just blown away by Linda and says, it feel like I've already known her for years. And the pair discover that they also have a lot in common, especially their love for red Thai curry and country music. Everything is going great, which is exactly why Lyndall doesn't want to give Cameron any reason not to trust her. So she decides to pull him away from the wedding to tell him about her cystic fibrosis. Um, I have a chronic illness called cystic fibrosis. I've always approached the start of relationships thinking that it is something that I want to tell them up front because then they have all of the information and can decide whether that's something that they want to take on. I reckon we've really hit it off. I'm smiling all day, I couldn't stop. I know, I almost like forgot how to smile because my cheeks ended up shaking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just nervous that he might not understand. Um. Um. There is something I wanted to talk to you about, though. Okay. Um, it's nothing particularly ominous, I hope. Yeah. Um, but it is something that I want to tell you before we go into this. Um, anyway, um, so I think, like, yeah, um, I have a chronic illness called cystic fibrosis. I don't know if you know anything about it. Um, I know about it. You know about it? Yeah. Like, well? Yeah. Uh, we had a mate pass away. She had it back in Grafton. No way. Yeah. That's why you have trouble breathing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> so one of my close mates lost one of his one of his girlfriends to see her. So that touches home and so I know what it does and I know how deadly it is. So yes, we see Cameron's life was personally touched by CF and he tells her the heartbreaking story of his friend who passed away from suffering from the illness. And he appreciated the fact because it took a lot of courage for her, meaning Lyndall, to sit down and tell him all of that and he respected every part of it and it just turned out great you know they had a kiss they had their first dance she actually spent him around and i can already feel the chemistry between these two So next up is Bronte and Harrison. So we saw that the experts tried to convince us, the fans, that Harrison's self-assuredness is just a defense mechanism. Strip away all that bravado and the father of one is just a sensitive guy looking for a woman who shares the same old school values as he does. 
And then we have Bronte, who's 28, who is all about that old school romance and wants the same kind of love as her parents who've been married for more than 30 years. Now, Harrison wants to put his best foot forward on his wedding day and prepares by putting on his James Bond inspired suit and spraying enough cologne to trigger pretty much an asthma attack. However, once he was at the altar, he had a very interesting start off conversation with her sister and yeah, it started one way and went a different direction. We got this. We got this. You're a lucky man. You're a lucky <laughs> man. She's not doing too badly herself. He's <laughs> <laughs> mm, confident anyway. <laughs> That comment didn't sit well with her at all. She called him cocky and arrogant. And yeah, it's not getting off to a good start, at least for her friend, which we'll talk about later, and of course her sister. In comes Bronte and she looks absolutely beautiful. And we actually got to see the two of them exchange a lot of compliments, a lot of flirts. And the attraction is definitely there for these two, at least for this moment. Bronte is on cloud nine. However, her friend Jess already knows that there is something not quite right about Harrison. And Jesse even told the cameras that as soon as she saw Harrison, her heart sank because she knew that she recognized him and that he was the person that she was warned about how Harrison is pretending to be someone that he's really not. And she has the proof. Where does she recognize Harrison from? What was she even warned about? And who is Harrison pretending to be? And what proof is she talking about? Check it out. How are you feeling? He's so lovely. Like, he's so nice. I need to tell you something. You need to tell me something. Chase, oh, I'm just so do you want to sit, stand here? Are we, everyone's looking. Are making people see us? It's happening. Okay, so. It's okay. I have a friend that is from Sydney. Okay. She told me about this guy that is going on to Max that she has been dating for the last month and a half. Yeah. I spoke to her. She told me that he's like saying to her how he's going to wants to be with her. He finishes this experiment. Yeah. Babe, it's him. It's him. It's Harrison. He's pretty much been planning a future with this young girl. MT is planning on being with her after this experience. Why are you lying? Why are you lying? I have pictures of himself and the blonde girl that he's been dating. She sent me that. So as soon as I saw Harry, my heart just sank because I knew that I recognized him and I knew what he was really here for. Jess not only have the claims, but she have the photo evidence to back up her claims. There are photos of Harrison showing this girl how he's packing his bags to head off for his wedding day. And to add insult to injury, apparently Harrison joked about how funny it would be if he got this girl pregnant even before joining the show. And of course, she is pissed off. So Bronte storms over to confront Harrison about the rumors in question question immediately. The 20 year old that you have on the outside. I don't have a 20 year old on the outside. Be honest. I'm dead serious. Who's the 20 year old that you've been anyone. speaking to? Come was... on, please be honest with me. Apparently you're going around telling this young girl that you're going to be waiting for her and that you want to see her. And now you're going to spend your weekends hanging out with her and not me. Um, look. Um, I was seeing a number of girls before I came into this. Single guy in Sydney. 
And yeah, like, I didn't know if I was, if this was going to last a week, a month, the entire experiment that I would see them again. But I'm not in a relationship with anyone. They're just people that I was seeing. Yeah, yeah, I was seeing, I was seeing multiple women at a time uh, before I came into this. Yeah, I'm not going to hide from who I was. Like I was single and dating around. I'm not going to pretend like I wasn't. So, look, there was, there's someone that um, this, I've like had a crush on for a long time, and we connected, we connected like a week before doing this. You know, in, in, a, in a lot of ways, in the lead up to this, I, I was actually saying, I kind of wish that this this was you that I was going into this with. So we saw that he soon tried to clear up any doubts that she had by telling her he was dating, but not one person, multiple women at a time, and that led up to the wedding. Yeah, Harrison, that didn't really help your case. And then he makes matter worse by admitting that he wishes that he was marrying another girl he had a crush on instead of Bronte. Yeah, of course, this was her worst nightmare ever when it comes to a situation like this. And then it started to toast and she had to act like, especially her and her sister who already got bad vibes about him at the wedding, she had to push through all of this. So let's get the conversation started down in the comment section. It's already explosive and we're just in episode number one for Married at First Sight Australia in true fashion. So we have one crazy bombshell of an admission and uh, with receipts. And then we had another beautiful wedding between Cam and Lendo. So let me know your thoughts. So I hope you enjoyed this recap. Stay tuned for other recaps on this channel. And until the next video, like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.